Greetings, this is Dr. Steve Graves from the CSUN Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is a short video tutorial exploring the concepts associated with a spatial clustering measurement tool called Moran's Eye. And Moran's Eye tests for uh, the level of clustering. And as you can see on the screen here on the map, there is intense clustering at the state level for a variable average farm size. Now this is a bivariate variable, meaning there's only two choices. It's either below average or above average, one or two. And so this is um, the sort of thing that you would traditionally do a join count analysis on. And, and that's a fine statistical test, but the Moran's Eye tool is a far more sophisticated version of that test. And so what we're going to do in this lab is the students will work on this map, but for the demonstration I'm going to zoom in on California and right now you can see that the California map is being rendered by median age for males. That's what this stands for um, here in the table of contents. You can see some clustering here, but the question is, and this is what Moran's eye does, is it tests a null hypothesis that the pattern of intensity or the numerical or percentage values associated with neighboring counties or states, neighboring polygons, are more similar than those that are not neighboring. How you measure whether something is a neighbor or not is itself a decision that you'll have to make, and we will come to that. It could show clustering. We see some of these counties appear to have like variables, and that makes sense because of Tobler's first law of geography, which states that things that are closer to each other tend to be more alike than things that are further apart. And so in the natural order of things, clustering occurs. It just is the way things are. It is somewhat unusual to find an instance where things are naturally dispersed in nature. If the variables turn out to be overly clustered, sometimes, and, and this is going to be an important thing for you to remember moving on, then it suggests that the units of measurement, in this case counties or over here states, are not functioning independently of each other, that they should perhaps be considered a single unit. And that is an important notion when we finish the semester with regression. The null hypothesis says that it should be a random distribution, and so these darker blues and these light yellow colors should be sort of randomly distributed. And then uh, absolute dispersion would mean that um, those colors would be in, you would see almost no like colors touching each other. So similar values would be rarely adjacent to one another. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so perhaps the first thing you should do after you open this is save a copy of the file for yourself in a drive that you have access to and uh, give it a new name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run the Moran's Eye tool on several different variables on this California County map. Um, most of the things, if not all of them, will turn out to be clustered, but that's okay because the important thing is that we want to generate a statistic, a z-score, a p-value, and uh, a ratio of, of observed versus expected in terms of the distribution. So let's go ahead and select the Analysis tab, click on Tools, and begin typing in this top window Moran's Eye. 
And there are two sort of uh, uh, Moran's eye. One is the one associated with Luke Anselin, but this is the one you want, spatial autocorrelation. And so we're going to test for spatial autocorrelation, which is a fancy way of saying clustering. Our input features are going to be California counties. The input field, we'll just start with median age for males, which is med age M. Select generate report, which will generate an HTML file that looks really pretty and gives you a visual indication of clustering in addition to a numerical one. This is perhaps the important two things that we have to, to make a decision about, the conceptualization of spatial relationship. So this is, well, how far are things away from each other considered neighbors? Now, in some of these instances where we could see these counties, perhaps um, this county here, which is Yolo County, and this county here, which is San Joaquin County, they're not far from each other, but they're not considered neighbors. Uh, by the same token, San Francisco County is probably not going to be considered neighbors with Alameda, but they are connected by a bridge, and so in some ways we may want to consider them neighbors. And so there are ways of indicating that neighbors should be considered neighbors based on their distance from each other. So with a fixed distance band, for example, you can indicate how many miles, meters, or feet you are away from each other before they qualify as neighbors. But for this test, and, and this you would have to check with the environments and in your map to see, and your uh, county level map here to see what coordinate system and projection you're in in order to determine the distance band. Of course, uh, this help file is actually pretty good for this one, but what we're going to use in this exercise is contiguity edges and corners, which means anything that is touching each other either along an edge or at an intersection, perhaps like the four corners in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah, that all four of those states would be considered neighbors using contiguity edges and corners. Sometimes it's called rook contiguity, and that comes from chess. Um, and at this point, we're going to leave the row standardization as the default OK, generate report, everything is in good order, and click Run. The writing of the HTML report takes longer than any of the other elements of this, so you may have to give it one minute. And here it is, it's opened up. I'm going to click View Details to put it in the center of the screen. And how do we read this out? So this tells us the parameters that we put in, except uh, this doesn't really count. The z-score is 3.19, and so from that, that indicates that it's beyond, well beyond 1.96, and that tells us there is clustering. And here is the p-value, which is our chance of making a mistake if we s argued that there was clustering, and that's pretty low, about one in a thousand. And the really cool element here is that on my C drive, uh, this HTML file has been generated. So I'm going to pull it over here. And um, this is nice to go ahead and get a screen capture of this and then you can paste it in a Word document, or you can um, save it as an HTML itself, or open this HTML in Word, 
and then it gives you this sort of a little visual indication of not only how uh, that it's clustered, but how far out in general terms on the bell curve that this Z value would have. So it is highly clustered, and that is not surprising. And so I urge you to try several of these um, variables from either the California map, but then your homework is likely to be the US state map. Um, a number of these variables, like population, are definitely going to be clustered because the largest cities have suburban counties that are also heavily populated, and each of these are population figures as well. A few of these stand a chance of not being clustered, like median age, average household size, that kind of thing, because there may not be a reason why the average family size or some of the other variables would vary from place to place, and those are the kind of things that you are far more likely to find randomly distributed. So that is essentially how you calculate the Moran's Eye tool. Um, you may want to play with these various ways of determining or declaring uh, counties or states or polygons neighbors, but that's it, and it's a really cool tool. Until next time.